Good morning, my name is Jerry Saunders. Today's date is January 27th, 2024. This is my week six assignment for FTT 122, Introduction to Ammunition and Basic Ballistics. Today we're gonna to talk about a few things. We're gonna discuss trajectory and sights, gyroscopic drift, drag, Magnus effect, Coriolis or Itavos effects, vertical angles, and transonic ballistic performance. All right, trajectory and sights. Line of sight, as we know, is perfectly straight. So when we're looking through the sight on our weapon, we're looking in a straight line. Bullets don't travel in straight lines. A pistol bullet will leave the barrel and rise to that line of sight to the target and meet, and then it will fall off. A rifle bullet, when fired, your sight is actually angled down. A lot of people, when they get the 20 MOA rail, it angles further down to allow them to angle back and shoot further. <clears throat> so as a rifle bullet's fired, it crosses your line of sight near the rifle, and then as it comes back down, it crosses on the far end. And this is typically where people zero their rifle for. But if you're on ship or somewhere that is reduced uh, distance, you can zero on the near side. So this might be your 30, 35 yard zero, but this is your 300 yard confirmation. So that's a, a quick rundown of trajectory and line of sight. The next thing we're gonna talk about is gyroscopic drift, or otherwise known as spin drift. Most people know it as spin drift. So I'm gonna use the handle of my cleaning rod here to demonstrate. This handle is free spinning to allow the rod to spin inside the barrel. What I'm gonna do, give it a good slap, make sure it's spinning, and then as I try to push it forward, it naturally drifts off to the right because I'm spinning to the right. That's a prime example of gyroscopic drift. As that bullet is spinning through the air, it's encountering that, that high, um, high pressure airplane that it's skidding across and it's causing it to do the same thing where it, it spins super fast and go, tries to go forward, but it naturally drifts off a little bit with that spin. All right, so drag is the force on a projectile from air resistance causing it to decelerate, but it only happens from tip to tail. So as you can see, this 408 Shytac round, you know, the force has a very small place to interact on, so these VLD bullets will fly a lot further. You know, obviously it gets some here, but it's not as as much as you know throwing a brick. So in comparison, here's a 40 caliber hollow point round. You know, this is like a flying shot glass. This is going to experience a whole lot of drag compared to this. All right, so the Magnus effect. This is a reaction to airflow specifically a re reaction to wind perpendicular to the bullet. So we have our lovely little 408 Shytac traveling happily through the air and it encounters wind. As this wind hits this bullet, if it hits from the left and the bullet is traveling right, you can literally picture even with the edge of this piece of paper, as it's traveling, it's going to want to roll up this piece of paper because it's going in the direction. Conversely, if we have our wind come from the other direction, the spin of this bullet is going to cause it to roll down the paper. So you can look at the wind as almost a, a physical push. Um, that best describes the Magnus effect. All right, so the Coriolis effect. <clears throat> this is my planet here. So we got our northern hemisphere here, southern hemisphere here. If I'm shooting directly north to south or south to north in the northern hemisphere, my round is going to impact slightly to the right. You can't exactly define this because if you're closer to the equator, this effect is more prominent than the further away you get. Now if I'm in the southern hemisphere, it doesn't matter if I fire south to north or north to south, my round is going to impact slightly to the left. This is known as the Coriolis effect. The Utavos effect affects your round when firing east to west or west to east. So the earth rotates west to east. If I'm shooting to the west at my target and say this little notch right here in the bottom of the frying pan handle is my target, I'm gonna fire as the earth still rotates my target moves. I'm going to hit below my intended point of impact 
roughly two inches for every one second time of flight that this bullet is in the air. Now the same thing, if I'm firing to the east, I fire my bullet off, same target here, boom, as this rotates, you know, over one second time of flight, I'm still getting that same two inch deflection, but it's going two inches high for every one second. This is known as the Etavos effect. The other way that this affects the round is how the round perceives gravity. If you've ever been on a, um, in a car when you're riding and you feel that dip when you hit a, a speed bump or something like that, and you feel that gravity in your stomach, the round does the same thing uh, depending whether you shoot east or west. And just as with the Coriolis effect, these effects are stronger at the equator. All right, shooting at angles. I love this topic. <clears throat> I'm gonna talk about this while I eat my lunch. Uh, if I wanna shoot from the top of my Red Bull can to this almond, it is roughly, uh, we'll say that far, right? Well, that's our true line distance. Take our blue one, and we come here. Now these don't add up, right? I compare that our true line distance is a lot further than our straight line distance what do we do with that information all right for our true line distance that's how far gravity affects our round for our straight line distance that's where we calculate our wind it's very easy um, a lot of people talk about the Pythagorean theorem with this but shooting in angles it's most people overestimate their distance because they're trying to shoot their true line distance and not their straight line distance all right, and finally, transonic ballistic performance, or somewhat lack thereof. When a round <clears throat> goes subsonic, it breaks the sound barrier, and while it's in the sound barrier, it's supersonic. But on the back side of that, as it begins to slow and drag, slows it down, it becomes transonic. And when it comes back out of the sound barrier, a lot of times the forward weight of the, the round will shift, and it will start to yaw like this. Now, if the round is properly stabilized, it will slowly come back in online and start to travel again. But pretty much if a round's gone transonic, you can pretty much expect a lack of performance. You know, a lot of rounds, they'll, they'll get transonic and then they just start going end over end and they'll veer off of their course. So pretty much at the, most people consider their transonic range their maximum effect.